Hey, welcome to this Windows channel, and this is the full review of Windows 10. It's finally here, July 29th, 2015, and we are looking into the future with a operating system that is truly, truly a big advance in the Windows world, and uh, one of the best operating systems out there, that's for sure. Um, I'm an insider, and uh, I've been testing Windows 10 since the beginning of the Insider program. Frankly, up to about the month of June, I was really, really, really thinking that we were not going to have a good experience with Windows 10. Uh, lots of bugs, lots of problems. Things weren't really looking very good. And suddenly appeared uh, 10166, which was better than the uh, average operating system. It wasn't bad. It did have, uh, you know, was much better than the other experiences that I had, especially 10.130 that I remember being very bad. And suddenly, 10.240. 10.240 was a big change. Suddenly we had a stable operating system, something really neat, something really cool. It worked well, and it was fast, and it did everything that we wanted. And basically, it was so good that basically on July 29th, what people are receiving is pretty much 10 to 40. This is Windows 10. And that's why the insiders did not get an update, because insiders got it first two weeks before. And um, then everybody got it on July 29th. And so it's a very, very nice operating system. The upgrade. I upgraded two Windows 7 machines with very old machines, Core 2 Duo machines, and also a Windows 8.1 Core i5 machine. And I can tell you the experience, the upgrade was fantastic. It went really well. It was amazing. I kept all my programs on my old Windows 7 machines, and I can tell you they all work. And it's very, very interesting because I did have on one of my PCs very unusual software, and it was very, very um, you know, I was scared a little bit because I knew it was a big leap forward and keeping everything. And boy, it's just fantastic. All programs work. All files are there. Even the background picture was uh, still there. You know what? If it wouldn't be from the slight changes in the taskbar at the bottom, I would not have noticed I was upgrading to Windows 10 for a, a little bit until I clicked the start menu. So the upgrade experience is fantastic. Now, um, that said, some people still complaining they didn't have the notification, still saying they don't have the upgrade. Uh, one thing I have to say, Microsoft does say to be patient. Uh, you know, they are upgrading in waves and some of you did not get the upgrade. So it's very important to know that. But you can force it and if you look at my videos, there's a video that shows you how to install it right away if you can't wait. And if you wait, you'll eventually have the notification and it should work. Uh, so that's for sure. So um, upgrade is just great. You upgrade from any operating system and it just works. If you choose to upgrade, you can choose to keep everything. Your programs are going to be there. Your files are going to be there. You can choose to erase everything. I did that on my Windows 8 machine because I wanted to have a fresh new copy installed. And it's really working well. First thing that we notice, of course, is the start menu. The start menu, which is a new hybrid start menu with apps and programs. Everything's mixed there, uh, but it's well done. You know what? In Windows 8, the biggest problem, we had the impression that we were in two different systems. We had the impression that we were in a modern system and an old desktop style system. It was really weird. In Windows 10, integration is great. It doesn't feel like we're in two worlds. It feels like we're in a world with apps and programs, and it feels right, and it feels cool. Nice start menu, which is back with the arrow glass effect. You can see through. It's very nice. You can customize the start menus you want. You can actually, you know, like make it bigger, taller, do whatever you want. It's a very nice experience. You can customize your tiles. Some people told me I don't like apps. Well, you just right click on one. You just say unpin from start. It's gone. You go and click on your programs, your favorite programs. Just right click, pin to start, 
you customize it there it's very nice you can actually make groups as you see here two groups and of course I'll be showing you how to do these groups so you customize the start menu like you want on the left side you have the most used apps which are showing there so this will of course customize itself with the most used programs that you have in apps you also have the file explorer available the settings power to restart shut down and so on and all apps if you want to see in alphabetical order all the programs and apps that's installed on your computer so very nice start menu and a very nice experience with the start menu we also have a new browser Microsoft Edge that new blue E and you know what that blue E they wanted to keep it for a simple reason it's something that people know what it is and that's why they wanted to keep that E. And it's a little different, but it does look like Internet Explorer. So people will click there naturally because they know that it's, you know, going on the Internet. That's the button. Uh, and that's for sure. Microsoft Edge is also a new type of browser. It is a browser that, uh, you know, is reworked, redone from scratch. They wanted to go away from the Internet Explorer brand because, frankly, Internet Explorer has bad reputation. And so by having a new brand with Microsoft Edge, they want to start fresh, you know. And it has a number of features that are nice, you know, a few customizable features, including a, a black team if you want to uh, change the, the team to the dark team, what they call. Uh, you can show the favorites bar. You can customize your start page, customize the search at the top you have an address bar that is also a search bar and if you customize it right you can actually make that bar a Google search bar for example uh, it has also speed it's a very fast browser in the tests that I've done and many of the tests that I've seen on the web it is probably close to the fastest browser we have to surf the web and that is a very very nice uh, you know look at how fast the pages appear here it's just so so cool to see such a nice uh, fast browser it has a little drawback with the fact that some pages don't actually uh, show up right but I've not seen a lot of those and you know as the days and weeks go by this is going to be fixed and things are going to work great I think with um, the operating the uh, Microsoft Edge browser uh, it has a feature so when you read an article for example want to share it with someone you can click that share button on the upper right it brings a panel on the right side you can share with mail OneNote and other apps depending on what you have installed this list will have more or less options but you'll be able to share with uh, Facebook and so on so this is a very nice uh, feature actually because it makes it really easy to share with people a web page for example and another reason why it's fun to have that share option is that when you're reading an article say you want to share and show something to someone or if you're working on a project you need to take notes or maybe circle stuff and you want to uh, use a web page to um, you know have that information displayed you can click the edit button where you can actually take a pen make drawings uh, underline something in a web page you can add text notes so you can say hey look here and you can add all sorts of little notes you can add uh, some drawings over it it's very complete little thing and it's a nice feature you can save that page afterwards to uh, actually keep it as it is or you can even share it once again with other partners so if you're working on something you have notes on a web page maybe or you have articles that you want to uh, you know underline or highlight something it's a cool feature I think it's not everybody that's gonna use it but I think it's a useful feature that's nicely implemented very very cool of course you've got your favorites favorites bars you've got the reading view which is very nice reading view that lets you uh, view an article just the article no artifact I use this all the time on my tablet it's so nice to have you know just an article no distraction reading view is actually very nice feature that I use a lot and um, you know 
it's just a cool cool browser very fast and very nice um, one of the complaints that people will have probably is the fact that Microsoft Edge in its version that is on your Windows 10 computer right now does not allow add-ons and that feature will be added in the fall when we get the second um, update which is threshold 2 in October somewhere around October uh, it seems that Microsoft Edge will have add-ons enabled and you'll be able to you know customize a lot more of the browser you'll even be able to use add-ons from Google Chrome and they're actually gonna work on your uh, Edge browser and that's quite a nice feature so you have Edge where's the Internet Explorer it's gone it's not gone but it's hidden so they want you to use Edge so they really hid Internet Explorer away but if you search for it you'll see Internet Explorer is right here it's the same Internet Explorer 11 that you have on um, Windows 8 and Windows 7 so if you need compatibility especially for business for example if you uh, need compatibility for other reasons or if you just like Internet Explorer and want that it's still there and you can use it and it's still the same um, really nice browser uh, that is still there it's just that it's hidden from view but it's still part of Windows 10 another nice thing that I can't show you really here but I'll be making videos because on the insider preview I have it activated is Cortana Cortana is the new assistant in Windows 10 it will assist you in different ways you can give it vocal commands you can ask it all sorts of things but you can also have it uh, you know give you all sorts of reminders it will actually help you in many many aspects of your Windows 10 experience um, that white rectangle you see here actually will customize itself depending on your use so for example if you're always uh, reading the news uh, if you're always I don't know reading sports uh, checking the weather that's the first things you're gonna see Cortana is actually gonna pop up the things you use the most you look at the most to make things enjoyable and to have the a greatest experience you can have on your computer it also integrates with different aspects of Windows 10 for example it in integrates with Microsoft Edge so for example if you search for a restaurant not only will you have the restaurant that you're searching for but Cortana will for example pop up a little window and it's gonna say oh you want to go at Paisano's well it's open from uh, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Monday to Friday and here's the street address because it knows and it even, even can display the menu for example so it's very very nice you're searching for hotels and you're searching for specific places uh, because you're going on vacation well Cortana can pop up and say oh you know what near that area you have this or that that you might want to check for or there's this hotel that might be interesting for you so it learns as you go through Windows and it is a good and interesting assistant in vocal commands I can tell you that it beats the Apple Siri and it beats pretty much uh, Google Voice it is the best assistant I've ever seen you know what I made an appointment in the calendar using it it went so well that I'm actually gonna use that often and you know I tried on my iPhone with Siri it's just so complicated that I just went crazy and decided I never use that again and basically I never use Siri very much because it's just annoying well you know what in Windows 10 Cortana is actually fantastic it understands what you want I was listening to a song and I didn't know what it was I just you know told hey hey Cortana uh, what's this song 10 seconds later I had the title the album uh, you know everything it's an amazing nice assistant and it works much better than the other systems that I've seen that's for sure and for those that are worried because I do get these comments all the time there's a big general on off switch for Cortana you can switch it off and it's not gonna listen anymore and it's not gonna interfere with your life anymore and if you're uh, you know afraid of that um, new apps new functional apps there's uh, for example the photos app that is now there 
which is very nice. It has all the features, the basic features needed. If you want to, for example, um, you know, remove the red eyes of a picture, you want to modify part of a picture that you took, anything. It's, uh, you know, nicely done, uh, a really app for photos. And it works well and it's easy to use and understand, of course. And it integrates well with the operating system and also the OneDrive. Uh, it's part of what we call universal apps, so it is the same across devices, tablet, PCs, and computers, and that's what universal apps are, basically. Uh, another nice little feature is the phone companion. The phone companion is nice because it lets you not only interact with Windows, but with Android and iPhone or iPad. It's really nice that they've added that. So you just click, for example, the phone you have and it tells you how you can interact with the phone uh, OneDrive you know with uh, documents with Word Excel PowerPoint Skype um, and so on listen to music everywhere uh, to-do list that are shared automatically and it's a nice add-on that they've you know not only done Windows Phone but decided to add Android and iPhone or iPad stuff which is a nice touch I think you know you have the new app Groove is the new music app and it this is what was called Xbox music and you know what Xbox for pretty much everybody means uh, gaming and they wanted to go get away from that brand and I think they did it well with the name Groove so Groove music is also a store you can really really uh, listen to a lot of stuff you can have Groove music pass have online streaming of music uh, get your music everywhere through OneDrive and so on. It's organized in all the ways that you want. You can see the left album artist songs and so on. It's a new app. I think it could be interesting and I'll be of course testing this and using this uh, as we go on into Windows 10. Um, so it's uh, once again another universal app that works everywhere. Uh, another universal app is Film and TV which is the app where rented movies uh, are located. So you have films, TVs, videos, and so on. Uh, you've got these available. So you can click, for example, to a one and rent it or buy it and so on. So it's a very, very interesting uh, little app here. And, you know, it, it frankly is nice because it means that your Windows is now becoming with these apps a little bit like a media center now of course it's not like the media center that everybody wanted unfortunately it's gone and it doesn't work in Windows 10 so Windows Media Center that some people loved is not there but you have these apps that actually do some nice things actually uh, a great new app news app the news app has been revamped it's much better than it was. It's better organized. You can now really go through the articles and stuff in a much better fashion. It's more interesting to view. You have all the categories at the top, tech, science, entertainment, business, world, and so on. It's very, very nice to have this app. And I think I'm going to use it much more uh, because of the fact that it is more interesting to look at. The Windows Store has also been really revamped it's been totally redone and it's also very nice I can tell you the Windows Store is now much better than Windows 8 and Windows 8 it was a mess and what's really nice is that they actually also removed the crap apps in Windows 8 there were so many crap in the store that it was just not fun to use now it's better organized but you also not only can buy apps and games but you can also buy music. You can also buy movies or TV series. So it's very interesting to see that, uh, basically. Buying movie, TV series, music, stuff like that is an interesting part. And, you know, we'll see if it's going to, you know, catch on or not but it's actually a very easy way to turn your computer into a nice multimedia device basically and you know you've got the bonus of apps games and so on and of course lots of new stuff happening in the store so hopefully this is gonna really you know help everybody 
have a better experience. And frankly, the Windows Store is something that was not used a lot by users. And maybe here it might be a little more interesting for everyone. So let's hope so. Uh, File Explorer is here, where you can, of course, go through the folders on your PC. A little more colorful, but same type of going through your system like Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh, of course, with this PC, you see all your drives and everything. You can customize the look and the view, have a new ribbon if you want uh, at the top, uh, stuff like that. So it's interesting to uh, see that you can customize everything. And um, frankly, I love uh, the File Explorer the way it is. It actually is nice and works just as it should, you know, and it's not too complicated. Of course, they've redone in Universal Apps, uh, Mail App, Calendar App. Now this is nice. The Mail App is much better than it was. Uh, it supports multiple accounts. But what's nice is that in Windows 8, everybody hated the fact that it didn't support Pop Mail. Well, it does now, and this is nice. You can add a Pop Mail account. Finally, the app is better. It's uh, more beautiful than it was before. Um, it's a nice little app. I think I'm going to use it a lot. Of course. With uh, the integration of Cortana in here, you can search through your mail, for example, just with a vocal command and stuff like that. Works well. It's a, a nice little app. Another app that's been redone and it's nice, much nicer than it was in Windows 8, is the Calendar app. Very nice app. And even when you take a daily view, for example, you still have available a calendar on the left side. So this is a nice add-on because sometimes you're uh, you know, you want to write an appointment or something and you're just like, oh, what day is, you know, September 4th? Well, you can actually go through the uh, calendar on the left and take a look at that. Um, it also has a feature that it was gone from uh, Windows 8 ma uh, calendar app. It synchronizes with Gmail or Google Mail Calendar. And that's a big thing because I use Google Calendar a lot and I'm happy. And you know what? I think I'm going to use this app thanks to that. Really, really is nice. They've redone also another app, which is the Maps app. It wasn't that great in Windows 8, but it's improved here. You have new views. You have a traffic view. You have much more information available. Uh, you can have satellite view and so on. If they've improved it, you can, of course, uh, you know, travel somewhere, have uh, all of that uh, on the uh, Maps app, just like Google Maps, basically. And uh, it's improved. So if you're not using Google Maps, I think this is actually nice, basically, and a much better Maps uh, experience than before uh, on Windows, that's for sure. Settings and control panel are both there. Even though it seems weird that we have, you know, control panel, uh, with the good old icons or category view and also that you get you know the settings uh, actually the integration also is good here because all the most popular settings the ones that people search most of the time are in the settings so this is where everything is what people use basically and they left the other ones in the control panel but the good thing is that it integrates well, so if you're, you know, an old computer user like me that is used to the control panel to search for something, what's nice is that if an option is in settings, if you click on it here, it's going to bring you to the settings. And if a settings is in the control panel, it's just going to switch. And so you don't feel like you have necessarily two different places to look at. It feels more like, you know, one big place. Um, so it's interesting and you know what if you're used to the control panel but at least you're not going to be lost because here it's pretty much the same as it was in Windows 8 and 7 so at least you'll have you know um, ease of use of the control panel and of the settings in Windows that's for sure uh, that's really really nice we have a new action center and notifications area so here on the bottom right is the notifications area and action center so the action center tells you what's happening if something is new it's going to show up here notifications sometimes appear for a few seconds for example you get a new mail you'll get a little notification 
to say, oh, you got a new mail, and that's it. Uh, you've got, of course, at the bottom all the little shortcuts here, uh, like you know, tablet mode, connect, um, note, settings, and stuff like that. Um, it's easy to use. It's well done, you know, and it's not too annoying. So I think it's pretty nice the way they did it, actually. Um, one of the things I want to talk about tablet mode. Um, I was telling you, if you have a desktop mouse keyboard computer, Windows installs itself with a good old start menu. But if you have a touch enabled tablet, for example, it of course start, starts in a tablet mode. And it knows this with the keyboard. If there's a keyboard attached, it starts on the desktop or else it starts on the start menu for touch and it has that little hamburger menu on the left side which is a nice add-on so I think touch enabled devices will have good use of Windows 10 I think it's gonna be nice for that and what's cool is that with a thing called continuum uh, actually what's nice is that your computer actually adapts itself with the operating system if you plug in a keyboard. So for example, if you have a Surface tablet, when you have the keyboard on, you're in desktop mode. If you remove the keyboard, you become tablet mode. Continuum actually makes the switch easily from one device to the other, and it's a nice integration. And you know, it's a nice way of also mixing together tablets and PCs from uh, what we could see. Microsoft also added something called Windows Hello, and if you have special hardware for Windows Hello, you can actually um, use that to log into your computer. Microsoft wants to actually remove the need of passwords. So Windows Hello requires special hardware. You can have that new um, Intel RealSense 3D camera or through a touch you know, for uh, a, a fingerprint reader, stuff like that, so that you can log in with your iris or a face scan or just with, you know, your um, fingerprints. Of course, it also adds a possibility, if you have none of that, to enter a PIN instead of a password. That I use, I use that function a lot, and I actually like the fact that they've added that, and it's nice to see that. Now, Windows Hello requires special hardware that not many old computers have, but many new computers will eventually have on their uh, computers. So that's an interesting uh, thing. Also, another uh, feature of Windows 10 is the user accounts. Uh, you know, in Windows 8, they, they were forcing pretty much the use of uh, Microsoft accounts to use Windows they've backed off on that on Windows 10 so you can actually use Windows 10 pretty much just with a user account not a Microsoft account so that's a nice feature nice add-on because a lot of people don't like the fact that they need a Microsoft account now I like Microsoft accounts because it syncs everything in between my computers and that I like a lot but you know it depends on everybody and you have the possibility to create local accounts in Windows. Another feature that, you know what, it's been there for a long time in Windows, but nobody ever used it, basically, and I've never really seen anyone use it, and it's the fact that you can actually have virtual desktops. And you know what, virtual desktops are nice for one thing, is that if you are someone that, uh, for example, does multiple things on a computer, like me, I have work, I have videos, but I have gaming. And so what you can do is actually go down and there's that little thing called task view. And when you go there, you can see I have two desktops right now. If I click on the other one, here's my other desktop. And you can actually multiply the desktops as much as you want and customize them with your own apps, your own programs. So if you remove something from one desktop, it's not removed everywhere. It's just removed from that desktop. And so you can you know, create a virtual desktop for work, a virtual desktop for gaming, a virtual desktop for other uses. And it's like having different computers in the same computer, basically. 
and it's a nice add-on and you can just add as many virtual desktops as you want. The fact that they added that task view here at the bottom shows that Microsoft feels like that's something that people don't use and that should be used basically because um, it is available and it is something that's nice to have. So uh, multiple desktops or virtual desktops are available here of course. As for the system itself, it's fast, it boots fast, it works very well, it had pretty much no problems, I didn't have any freezes, crashes or anything. Uh, it's a very good operating system for that. Compatibility with older stuff is amazing. I've upgraded my machine to, you know what, um, Windows 7 machine to a Windows 10 and even old weird software that works on Windows 7 all upgraded pretty well in Windows 10. Compatibility is the best of all Windows versions I've ever seen. So you don't have to be scared of losing much when you upgrade basically because of that and it's just amazing. Now there is going to be upgrades to Windows 10 in the future month because Windows 10 is a living operating system basically and the living operating system means that it's upgraded and made better all the time and that's cool because that's what's happening in Windows 10 they have actually uh, really been working hard to make it upgradable all the time so for example in October we'll have uh, a big upgrade that is going to add new features and make things better uh, another one next year and all that stays free and you know that's nice and that's the good thing about Windows 10 it's free it stays free and it's a very nice once again um, living OS basically and finally you got Windows updates a lot of people been talking about that Windows updates is something that you know a lot of people are scared because the updates are done pretty much all the time but you know you have a way even in the home version to just say well not right now of course you'll be forced to install them anyway but not right away and frankly I'm not that scared about that um, I think we're gonna be very very nice and okay with it and you know what from all the comments that I've been receiving it seems that most people that I've upgraded are really happy with it and that is very very good news for Microsoft I think so hope you enjoyed my review of Windows 10 great operating system do upgrade I think it's worth it I think you should upgrade your computers to Windows 10 and it's free if you enjoy my videos want to subscribe to my channel you'll be informed when new videos are online if you have any comments questions anything let us know by subscribing, giving me thumbs up, you'll be notified of new videos and I'll have tons of them because we have to use Windows 10 and learn how to use it and I'm here for that. So if you have Windows 10, why not share your experience? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want to go back to your old operating system? Why not share it with us on the channel in a civilized and a good manner? And it's always fun to have your feedback. Thank you for watching.